The Dallas Cowboys signed an all-pro player on Tuesday, Landon, but was it a good deal for Dallas? All that and more on this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked On. Locked, 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 Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. He is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, we're going to get to some uh, moves that the Cowboys actually made in free agency over the last couple of days. But I, I, do, I want your take on the wide receiver market that's happening right now in the NFL because we saw Devontae Adams get traded for a first and second round pick a couple of days ago. Today, Tyreek Hill traded for a first and second round pick and additional picks. Both those guys got over $24 million a year. What's going on in the wide receiver market? I don't know, man. Like, I, I, it seems to be kind of counterintuitive in a lot of ways to me. It, it feels like these big, maybe it's not counterintuitive, but I, I think, you know, the deals that people are putting out there for these guys seems crazy, you know, and, and, you know, trading for multiple, uh, you know, top 50 picks for receivers. And then on top of that, signing them enormous contracts. Um, you know, I, I, I think that it feels like there is a movement towards, you know, using a wider base of wide receivers and not having to rely on, on feeding one player. Um, and, 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 and it feels like there's also a movement of teams that are going the opposite direction. So it feels like there's like this kind of group of folks that are trying to lean towards a top end wide receiver. And then a group that's trying to use more of a, of a collective pass catcher type of uh, arrangement. Uh, and what's happening is that it's tearing the market apart. It's like you've got guys that are making, uh, I think the, the number that we we heard for for Tyree Kill after the trade is twenty eight million dollars a year. Yep. Uh, and it just seems outrageous, especially with all the uh, talented wide receivers that are coming out in in the league right now. You know, there is definitely a you know, a tier above the larger group of wide receivers that are elite. And I think that the guys that we've been talking about have kind of all fallen into that range in a, to the large degree. Uh, but to me, it just seems nuts. I, I, I don't know, to, 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 to put all your eggs into one receiver's basket like that. And I think, you know, we'll see how it works out for some of these teams, but it, it seems like it's made the market incredibly volatile. And, and, and wide receiver numbers are all over the place. So I, I think it's important to look at each scenario because I think if you just look at it in a vacuum, all, all these receivers are getting traded for first-round picks and stuff. Well, the Miami one, I, it makes a lot of sense to me for, for Tyreek because it's pick 29, so not a super high valuable pick, and pick 50, which is fine, right? But the Dolphins also have two first-round picks in 2023, and I think this is their way of like – Finding out for sure if Tua is the guy, right? Going maybe. in, maybe the best receiver in football, pairing him with Jalen Waddle, they're going to know one way or another this year if Tua is it or not. Maybe he's not it. Okay, now we can go and use those first round picks either to trade up and draft a quarterback, or we can be really enticing to, you know, another quarterback that maybe wants to come here. We have two first round picks to trade. So, it, in some of these cases, it makes sense. Devontae Adams obviously has a connection with Derek Carr. The Raiders are at least in a win-now window. Uh, but, yes, there's receivers that come out every year of Lanham. But there's still a lot of teams that have a really hard time developing and drafting these guys. Look at the Eagles, right? Yeah. How many picks have the Eagles spent on receivers over the last decade only to have Devontae Smith, I mean, kind of work out? We're even waiting to see of that one. But they missed on Jalen Rager and J.J. Arcego whiteside Jeremy Macklin was only okay and – I mean, it, it's a lot harder to find receivers than I think people think. Well, I mean, they should stop drafting the bad guys. I mean, that's that's the. That's, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, mean I think that's part of it, though, too, right? It's like teams just don't know what they're looking for at receiver. New England, as good as New England is at building championship level teams, they are awful at picking receivers. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know that that. 
I don't know that going out and getting a guy in free agency makes your picker any better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I not that Tyreek Hill isn't fantastic, and I think he's, you know, he's going to be great. But is is it a good fit for what they're doing? Is it know. a good fit? Is it a good fit for what they want to do if they don't want to him next year? And that, and I guess that's my thing is that I understand the idea of fully buying into or needing to assess whether your quarterback is legitimate or not. But you're making a commitment beyond this year with with sure. with Hill and 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 you know not just with the money but with the picks too because uh, you know it's it's that third and fourth year of what those first and f- second round picks would be doing is where you really miss them right you miss that talent to pay ratio that you get when you shop in 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 the draft so um, yeah I mean I, I definitely agree with you that that each situation is unique and and I and I can also buy into the idea that for the Dolphins who are rich with draft picks it's a lot like one of these teams like the Colts a couple of years ago or, or any of these teams that have been like sitting on huge amounts of cap space right the money doesn't mean as much to them right no, because the they have it and they, make, right so I, I can see that for uh I can I can I can understand that argument what what I will, will say is that I don't know that that makes I don't know that's a good argument as much as that's something that the teams are trying to convince themselves. I think that you know what I'm saying like I think sure. that ultimately more so than cap space money draft picks have like an inherent value to them uh, have mm-hmm. an opportunity cost to them that that, the, that cap space cash doesn't have. Right. You know uh, so I, agree. I I think that there is something to the idea that you know trading a whole bunch of valuable assets uh, and then on top of that, paying a, a very high uh, dollar contract to a wide receiver, it's risky, even if you're trying to d- discover who your quarterback is. All right. And this leads me to another question about receivers. Um, yeah. We're seeing guys, I mean, Devontae Adams got $28 million a year. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, $27 million. Mike Williams, $20 million. Amari Cooper, $20 million. Christian Kirk, $21 million. Like, are we at a spot now where a team should fade paying receivers? and just draft and develop and let those guys go or are they still so important that hey if you have a good one you're you're better off just to pay them and understand that they make your passing offense better which is really all that matters in the nfl what what do you what do you think should be happening here i i I mean i I think it's not as cut and dry you know I, i think it is a situation where some pass offenses are more comfortable kind of having a top end guy to build around and then to kind of, you know, create passing opportunities for other folks based on the attention that's, you know, someone like Devontae Adams is getting and, and someone like uh, uh, Tyreek Hill is providing in the underneath uh, as he stretches the fields vertically, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know that there is like a, you know, clear cut answer here. I think that there is, you can make it work work both ways. But what I think that is is happening now is that teams are, strongly committing to their positions either way right like they're like they're either like okay we need a top end wide receiver for our guy so we're willing to pay crazy amounts of money uh, and forego kind of maybe you know more talent at the wide receiver two and three and beyond positions while other teams are like you know what I, i can't rely on this receiver to produce on a regular basis the way that i could if i broke that money up into two or three very good wide receivers as opposed to one excellent wide receiver. I'll go the route of, of more consistency and, and, and spreading that out a little bit. So I don't know that one works more. I don't know that one works better than the other, you know, universally, but I do think that it seems like the teams are committing to one or the other more yeah. strongly yeah. than they had before. Um, last thing. What do you think Cedric Wilson thinks about all this? Because he went to Miami with, the, you know, the idea that, hey, he could potentially be one of the starting outside receivers and he might be wide receiver four on that team again. Yeah, back to square one for him. But, I mean, he's a lot richer than he was before. Yeah, I think so, he'll be okay. Yeah, I'm sure he'll find a way to be okay. And, look, I, I, I think Cedric Wilson's strength is, is his, his versatility, his ability to yeah. kind of do a ton of different stuff well, including all the special team stuff you could possibly need and throw the football when Tua, you know, eventually gets, wears out his welcome. You know, it could be that Cedric Wilson is, is QB1 by week three of this season. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that he'll be fine. I, yeah, he's going to be the most uh, – or the highest paid fourth receiver in the league. Uh I, I would think. Actually, that's or, not even or, true. Or, 
or, this, or the lowest paid quarterback one, right? <laughs> one, of the, one of those two. Uh, by the way, I was looking at Miami's depth chart today. Uh, they are paying Devontae Parker, I think, $13 million this year um, to wow. be their wide receiver three. And do you know who their wide receiver five is? Believe it or not, an old friend of ours, Alan Hearns. Wow. Oh, that's right. Actually, after the injury, he ended up signing, picking up with them. So Yeah. Is it hard to believe uh, he's still in the league, though? I, I mean, especially – look – the guy was not especially explosive before that gruesome injury, uh, and and he's still in the league. Kudos to him. He's great. He seems like a great guy from everything we've heard. So I, I'm glad he's still around. Uh, hasn't played though since 2019, so it's been it's been a little bit. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break before we get to, into the Cowboy free agency news. <laughs> uh, I know it's been a bit. Uh, here, here on Talking Dolphins. Here. Yeah, Talking Dolphins. Uh, no, we talk about everything here on this podcast. Yep, but uh, we want to let you guys know about Built Bar. This year, we've been sticking to our New Year's resolutions to try to eat better. Uh, and we, we thank Built Bar for helping us accomplish that. Built Bars contain only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17, yes, 17 grams of protein. Compare that to your average candy bar that has 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. They have so many great flavors, including mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond. And the new flavor this month is white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious, and they have new flavors coming out all the time. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, Landon, a couple Cowboy free agency moves. Let's start with the big one. The Cowboys signed an all-pro on Tuesday, and it's punter Brian Anger. Three years, nine million. Uh, I saw a tweet from Michael Galkin that said the Cowboys were not planning on signing Anger, but with some of the newfound cap space that they had, why not? So, what are your thoughts on Dallas bringing back Anger and having him be the third highest paid punter in the NFL? The money is not a thing. Like, let's, I don't know why we keep talking. It's, it, he's okay. As KD Drummond pointed out, he may be the third and highest paid punter in the league, but he's also being only paid a million dollars more than the lowest paid punter in the league. So it's not like there's a ton of room in there or that indicates anything. I, and he earns it. I, I mean, he's, he's the best. If he's not the best punter in the league, he's the second best punter in the league. Um, and I think that that has value to it. I, I, I liked, I liked that they brought him back. I mean, I, I'm not gonna, wasn't gonna cry that he was gone, but I, I think that this is reasonable for what you're talking about. And he flips the field and he did so several times. And he, despite what we, you know, look, I have been very consistent about how I felt about Brian anger all the way back to training camp. I felt like he had an incredible training camp and he had an incredible season and that people don't talk about punters enough. And, um, I think that he, uh, he he showed value at times when the Cowboys, especially when the Cowboys were struggling to move the ball on a yeah. regular basis. When 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 the offense was supposed to be the consistent thing on this team, Brian Anger was the consistent yeah. thing on this team, and at least allowing us to flip the field and give our defense a, a fighting chance, which I thought was important. I saw a really funny tweet yesterday that said, "When you have a running back as good as Ezekiel Elliott, you need a good punter," and that made me laugh. So I thought it was. Uh, I knew you would like that joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just, I thought in the NFL, there's only so many little edges and margins that you can win at, right? And I, I felt like as good as Brian Anger was last year, why not just spend a fifth or sixth round pick? You have four fifth round picks on a punter, save a million, two million, whatever. Because I don't want to punt. Like that's the best thing is I, I, I love how aggressive Mike McCarthy was last year. <laughs> And it seems like they were a lot of times their aggressiveness paid off. Like by not punting when most teams would, uh, they were able to become the highest scoring offense in the NFL. So I just wonder if paying him is going to lead to the Cowboys being a le- little bit less aggressive. No, you don't think so? They had, they had, no, because they had anger on their team last year, and yeah, they now were you're paying him more. Stop. No, I just don't buy it. I just think I, I think that I think that to me. They paid him because they liked what he did when they needed when they needed a punt. It was good to have a very good punter. I don't think that they're going to be any more likely to punt because they're paying him what a million dollars more than they paid him last year or something. Like I just I don't know. I don't believe that. It, this isn't this isn't. You can convince me with the with the Zeke stuff. You know, like you can convince me. Okay, they paid Zeke too much money. They feel obligated to give him the football. I I could buy into that. I don't believe that with the punter. It's it's just not that much money. It's it's less money than like you know they're gonna end up paying 
their third wide receiver probably. I mean, maybe not because they a draft pick, but you get my point. It, it's it's not it's not like they're well. We've we've got him on a you know a, a one point seven five million dollar contract this year. We're paying a base salary. We gotta make sure we punt the ball. I just I don't know. I have a hard time believing that. Hopefully, <laughs> I mean, I I, I hope there's I, not I, a I, ticket punt. I, I just uh, I have a hard time believing. That. I have um, that. I don't know. All right, so. My problem with it is just I don't want to punt, and he's fine. He's he's a good punter. I just I don't know. I just didn't think they needed to to pay him, and I don't think they were going to. But once they kind of lost the Randy Gregory thing, it's like, what else are we going to sp- spend our money on? I, I think that was a big deal, right? I mean, might as well get a good player at the position. Yeah. If you, look, they, they would they rather have Randy Gregory and and a, a rookie punter? Obviously, but but. You know, we're pivoting. We're we're moving on. We're you know, so now we can now that we don't can't pay for Randy Gregory, we can afford to bring back a guy like this on a pretty you know, it's it's it, it, the numbers make it sound worse than it is, but yeah, it's it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh all right. The Cowboys made another move signing defensive tackle Carlos Watkins. Uh the numbers haven't come out, but I gotta believe it's a one year deal, maybe two years to spread the cap hit over, but it's gotta be pretty close to venture minimum. Um Carlos Watkins was fine last year. I actually thought he got no. better as the season went on. He's not spectacular. Uh, I think he's still better as a rotational player than a starter, but he's fine. Uh, I'm good with this one. What do you think? Yeah, I actually just saw that Todd tweeted out that it was a, it is a one-year deal. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, again, just kind of bringing back in, I thought he played you know a lot better football near the end of the year, uh, was, was solid, especially in the run game. Had a pick six for a touchdown, uh, which was extremely impressive. So uh, maybe we'll see him more uh, dropping into middle third coverage and uh, doing some more uh, free safety looks. Uh, now that he's uh, got such, we know he has got such great hands. Honestly, though, I, I think he played good football. Uh, I think he uh, he you know was a guy that when he was there and healthy was able to uh, you know hold the line uh, as well as he could without while Brent Urban was gone. Uh, I hope this doesn't necessarily take us out of the Brent Urban run, running either, because I'd like to see him yeah, be like back as guy. well. Um, but I do think that Watkins provided for you good snaps as a rotational uh, defensive tackle, especially on early downs. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's not going to prevent them from drafting an interior defensive lineman early. They needed somebody else that could do some of the one technique stuff, some of the nose tackle stuff. Um, it's fine. And I actually. I, I kind of like their defensive line rotation with Gallimore, with Tristan Hill, Osa, and Carlos Watkins. They, I still feel like they need a a true starter at one technique, but if they go into the season with that unit, it's fine. I have no problems with it at all. I agree. I, I think it, it's just another rotational piece that you liked last year. This isn't your starter. Or this isn't a guy that's supposed to be a top-end guy. This is you – know, the Cowboys if he starts, had a you're lot- fine. Like if yeah. he has to start, you're fine with it. But he's not like, you know, like your high end free agent piece. He's not no. like irreplaceable or any, if you find somebody in the draft that you can get it, go in there and get, you'll, you'll do it. So this is a good, you know, the Cowboys had a lot of holes that this is just kind of filling holes. Yeah. This is the type of move that they they're known for, right? Guys, that yeah. if, like, if they had to play a game tomorrow, they would be very content and they would have no issue rolling Carlos Watkins out there. Would they like an upgrade? Absolutely. But they don't have to pick one. And that's the most important thing. Uh, all right, I want to get to some of your guys' Twitter questions because we, we got like 55 questions yesterday and we, we didn't have enough time to answer hardly any of them. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's do that. But before we do that, I want to tell you guys about a new product called Athletic Greens. Uh, this is a product that I've used every single day over the last couple of weeks, and I love it. It's, it gives you all of the daily vitamins and minerals that you need every single day. It costs less than $3 a day, and if you're investing in your health, It's cheaper than the coffee that you buy at your favorite coffee store. And it's cheaper than buying all the supplements that you would buy yourself anyways. It costs just, uh, it costs just a hundred dollars a month to to get athletic greens. And it creates a, it's been really beneficial to me in terms of waking up, feeling uh, rejuvenized. Uh, I've just felt much better over the last couple of weeks using it to make it easy. Athletic greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D in five free travel packs with your first purchase. Uh, I actually gave some of my travel packs to my wife because she likes to have them in her morning in the morning with her smoothie. Uh, all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash locked on. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash locked on to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily 
Nutri uh, Nutrient Insurance. All right, let's uh, let's get to some of your questions, uh, Landon. From these are from really good ones from Twitter. Uh, a couple of people wanted to know: Is there any free agent offensive lineman out there that you would be interested for the Cowboys? I know Eric Flowers is a free agent. We joke about him a lot on this show, uh, or we have in the past, but he's actually been okay at left guard. Is that somebody that you're interested in? I mean. I would have rather signed uh, Connor Williams if, yeah, if we're going to sign, you know, sign him. I, now, the I, benefit I don't know. of Flowers is he has more size and power than what yeah. Connor Williams does. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't hate it, I guess. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of his game. Yeah. I haven't been a huge fan of his game since he, when he came out of college. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, kind of moving him to guard was sort of a, uh, a, a way to find a way to you know make a, a player that people drafted uh, useful some way. Um, I How don't about know. JC uh, Treader, what are the the Brown Center that Treader's, was released? Treader's interesting because you know the, the thing that's the thing that's hard to get a gauge of is exactly how the Cowboys feel about Biotish. You know because I know it, I agree. It, it felt it felt like you know that he played better football as the season went on, without a doubt. Uh, but I don't know that like it was enough to like prevent him from so you know being usurped by someone like Treader, who I think you know the numbers would have to be right. I, that, and that's I think that's why I think that they're not likely to get him right. Is because I think for the Cowboys they it, it needs to be a clear improvement situation, and and I don't think that they want to pay a bunch of money because they have uh, what they probably feel like is a decent player at center on a very cheap contract because of, you know, he's a fourth or whatever. He's a fourth round yeah. pick. Right. Yeah. So um, I, I think that, you know, I understand the idea of upgrading talent. And I think that that's where people kind of their mindset goes to when they talk about, you know, signing these guys and free agent. But the question really becomes how much better are you getting for how much more money? Right. Like, I mean, is, is Biotish at his, on his rookie deal, a better deal than JC Treader at JC Treader at eight million a year. Eight million a year, exactly. Like, I, I, are you getting six million dollars? I don't. I, I'm making the numbers. Yeah, up. yeah six million dollars more out of out of JC Treader than what you have at Biotish. I don't know if that's the case. Whereas left guard, you don't have anything there. So really, anything that you sign is is kind of an improvement. Whether it's, um. You know, someone I, like I saw Daryl Williams, who was the Bills' right tackle. Who I mean, that's an option, but he's in his 30s at this point. Uh, the, the guard market's just not very good right now. You know, it's guys that have failed elsewhere. It's like right. it's Tri Turner, who who you know was obviously incredible at Carolina, and then played okay at Pittsburgh. You, you don't want him. Yeah, I'll take your word. It's Ethan Poisick from from Seattle no who thanks. came out in the league and was you know was basically supposed to be a guy who could play all five spots. I don't know that he played any of them well while he was with Seattle. Um, it's Billy Price who was terrible for the Giants last year. Quentin you know. Spain, who was the guy that got beat by Aaron Donald in the Super Bowl. <laughs> It's Richie Incognito who is uh you know has played really really good football at times but has also been in an absolute literal psychopath at different times so I, I mean it's like I mean yeah so that guy's played that guy's played two games over the last two years um but he's still yeah, really good I'm all the yeah, way out he's still I'm good. all the way out no. all the way out of him. but that's what all you're way. talking about here I think I think yeah. Incognito is gonna be 39 this year coming off a of torn Achilles so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no thanks. <laughs> no thank you. I'm and it's crazy. So and, and, and there's a chance that he might murder someone on your team. Wow. No, I think I'm good. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, like it's 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 stuff like that. It's 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 Kyle Long is available. You know, uh, I'm, I'm just looking here at the list and the, the names are guys. Yeah, I think you mentioned Quentin Spain. It's like it's guys that have gone to other places and have failed at other places. Yeah. You know, at this point, so it's like. I don't know that you're getting any kind of improvement over Connor Williams at this point in the, in the free agent market. So. Well, that's why some people ask, like, what about a trait? Because the Cowboys have all this cap space, would you be interested in taking on a big guard contract? Uh, you know, maybe similar to like what the Browns did with Amari Cooper. I mean, I guess you could now, right? Like, because you've got, you know, that room that you were going to spend on, 
uh, uh, on Cooper or I'm sorry, on, on Randy Gregory um, that you could, you know, potentially look for a trade now. I mean, I have to be honest with you. I, I don't really have anyone off the top of my well, head. The, that, the like, only one that made sense was Shaq Mason for the Patriots who the Bucks already took on his contract in a trade a couple days ago. Like that's literally the only one, the top, 15 guards this year are all guys on new contracts or guys on, uh, you know, guys on rookie contracts, basically, you know, guys like Quentin Nelson still. So there's just not a lot of great options out there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I kind of wish the Cowboys had kicked the tires on someone like James Daniels. I I mean, for the deal that he ended up signing for with Pittsburgh, I think I would have taken on that deal again. I'll say it one more time. I would have signed Connor Williams to the deal that he got. I would have as well. And I know I people are yelling and at their I'm sorry, podcast guys, but... apps or whatever. I mean, he's you look he was... at the market right now. There, it's there are just not very many good guards in the NFL, and Connor Williams is at least a, at the very least an average guard. He's better than every single one of the guards that are currently available, absolutely, without a doubt. So, yeah. I, I mean, you know, right now we're we're trying to plug holes so that we can potentially draft a guy and then improve at the position, which. I'm all for, but I also think that you, you could have signed Connor Williams to a $7 million a year deal and hoped that a guy who is not even 25 years old yet can still improve uh, and still get stronger, which I mean, I imagine he could um, and still play good football. So uh, yeah, I, 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 that's probably what the route yeah. I would have gone and may, you know, honestly, Maybe if they knew that they weren't going to be able to get Randy Gregory and they were like, maybe if they had the fourth the foresight, like that Randy Gregory wasn't going to happen and, and they had the money, then maybe they do sign that deal. Maybe. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunately he's gone at this point. All right. The, the last thing I want to talk about, because a lot of people were really interested in this yesterday when we were talking about at the end of that show, but wanted to spend just a minute or two on maybe the Cowboys changing their thought process on receiver and what they're looking for. We could even talk about this Mm. at the beginning, but Amari Cooper at the 2020, 2021 version of Amari just wasn't making plays after the catch. Uh, And I think they want to go with, you know, an offense that's a little bit easier for Dak, a little bit more Dak friendly. Do you think we're going to see them prioritize receivers in the draft this year uh, that perform well after the catch? Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. And I also think that there is a, a lot of that kind of stock available. You know, I think that's the thing is that there a lot of these guys that you look at coming out, there are a lot of, you know, guys that if you could find ways to scheme them open and get the ball in their hands, they're going to make plays, you know. And yeah. I think uh, it, it, this this is a great list that you put up here, if you want to explain that real quick. Yeah, yeah. so people watching on YouTube right now, it's uh, the the – how many yards after the catch each receiver in this draft average. And at the very, very top is Traylon Burks, who the Cowboys have been rumored to like for a while now. And actually they have a 30 visit with. So it's not surprising to me that the Cowboys have a lot of interest there because you can throw him screens, you can throw him or you could throw him the ball on slants and he can take it 30 yards. I think they're looking for ways to make the offense easier and simpler for Dak. Yeah, and you know, if you look at the rest of these guys too, there's the guy that I mentioned yesterday, Eric Ezekanama, uh, I guess, who has the become Texas Tech kid. There you go. Yeah, I guess who has become <laughs> my pet cat because I keep bringing up two two podcasts in a row. Yep. Uh, but I think a lot of these guys are kind of fit into that role of what you're talking about. I mean, obviously, the the yards after catch per reception kind of fairly further cements that, right? So. Uh, I think getting the getting guys in here who can break tackles once they catch the ball, who can create once they have the, their hands on the ball. Yeah. Um, I think that is kind of, yeah, like you mentioned, it goes back to what we talked about at the end of the year last year with hitting the easy button for Dak, you know, getting just making completions and then allowing the wide receivers to make plays with the ball in their hands and not just trying to throw into tight windows or, or, you know, throw into difficult windows down the field and then having the guy catch the ball and then immediately be tackled. Um, You know, we just didn't see enough. We didn't see enough plays last year where wide receivers or our tight ends or running backs were running into the end zone. You know, it's like they, they marched down the field and then they had to take shots at the red zone uh, which you know, it's much better to try to score from distance and, and, or at least have more opportunities to score from distance 
um, than, than you know, trying to like get into the red zone where things are condensed and your play calling becomes more difficult. By the way, uh, do you know which player on the Cowboys led the team in yards after the catch uh, per reception? Was it Cedric Wilson? No, it was Dalton Schultz. Yeah, I, th- I think it makes a lot of sense, right? Because that's the type of tight end they're looking for. Somebody that you can throw the ball three yards and take it nine. Is that a huge play? No. But when you can do simple things like that, it makes a big difference for your offense. I will say that, yes. Like, especially in the situations where uh, there's where, where Schultz really shines is if you can get the ball out to him on the outside near the sideline, he'll catch it three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. And then he's he's got a first down before a defender's even gotten to him. Yep, and that's yep. that's the thing that you saw between him and Jarwin, where they're both kind of big, they're both kind of tall. Uh, you know, they're 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 they they look more like wise tight ends. But the thing that kind of makes them unique, they're not super fast forty guys, they're not super agile guys, but their zero to ten is very quick, and they yep. get as soon as they get the ball in their hands, they're moving up field and they're eating up yardage. And that's something that I've always been impressed with when it comes to Dalton Schultz. Yep. Uh, last thing on these draft eligible receivers. I love somebody like George Pickens uh, from Georgia. Mm-hmm. I don't get the sense that the Cowboys are going to have a lot of interest there. While he does play on the outside, I don't know if they want another contested catch receiver. And even though he can make plays down the field, it seems like they're going to be more interested this year in the Jalen Tolberts and the Calvin uh, Austins and Jamison Williams, Trey Lombergs, all these guys that can make plays after the catch rather than having to put the ball in a specific spot to allow your receiver to go get it. They've already got two of those guys now on the roster in in James Washington and Michael Gallup. I don't think they need a third. I agree. Yeah, I think it's more about finding guys who can create with the ball in their hands quickly, uh, getting the ball out quickly, and then still being able to turn a, a short pass into a big play. I, I agree. Uh, I know I've been campaigning for Chris Olave a lot. I think in the old offense in which the Cowboys were wanting guys to create separation and get open with route running, he makes a ton of sense. But if they're changing the way that they want to play offense, he doesn't make sense. And you can see on this list right now, average 4.2 yards after the catch per reception. That's very, very poor. It's just not his strength. There's guys that are better in this class at doing that. We'll see uh, how interested the Cowboys are in some of those top prospects. But That is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can download the show wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, You can check us out, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Check us out on YouTube where you can see sweet graphics like the one we just had on the screen right there. Uh, Follow Lanon at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We'll see you guys next time.